kiss for you. So hello everybody and today we're going to be how to green screen things correctly. So many people have been asking generally as a question, uh, I've been seeing how do you green screen like a set or a movie or a project that you're doing in a way that makes it not look awful. I've had a couple experiences with green screens in the past and a couple of projects I've been doing so I've been here too about kind of elaborate on my process. So there's three different ways I personally think how to get the best most effective green screen that also looks pretty good and today we're going to be looking at a couple of options. One that uses free software, the other two that kind of use paid software and we'll go from there. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is DaVinci Resolve. Now DaVinci Resolve is an editing suite of software from editing, uh, quick editing, color correction, sort of motion graphics, that kind of stuff. It's sort of like bundled into a package that's all free which is pretty nice, and we're gonna be looking at that for how to do our green screen for number one. So this method uses a manual green screen. So first thing, um, this is kind of like the interface that we have to go to your folder in the media storage section, find where your thing is located. Mine's in a iCloud drive right now, so you import it into there. You go to the edit tab, you drag your clip in right here, and then you have to go to the fusion tab, which will bring you up to where you're gonna edit with the green screen. So we have media one, which is your input, or the scene and then media two, which is your output or the font product and then merge, which is things you need in order to like combine certain elements. So right there, I just uh, shift space on an open panel, searched for Delta here, which is the thing you need to control your system, control the like green screen thing. Went over to the inspector, which is like kind of the settings. And I went over to the first tab under background color and use the eyedropper to select the green screen. So it's green which is really good and you can't see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect with the little node system right here to Delta Kia, Kia and then drag it over to the media out. And as you can see, it's completely uh, out in the open and uh, invisible, right? Invisible transparent background. So now right now I'm just uh, adjusting the threshold level, which is going to this tab and sort of fixing some of the shadows and some of the weird areas that don't quite look as good to make sure it's like completely clean aesthetically as it can be and there's some messing with some of the settings like eroding and dilating getting some of the edges a little bit uh fixed up I haven't used this software in a while so i'm kind of getting readjusted to some of the settings and stuff so pretty much all those settings just uh make things a little bit more smoother so as you can see when i go ahead and zoom in to 200 percent the edges are kind of a little bit rough around his neck and hairline and stuff so i try to go through the clear foreground and background to uh, fix that problem now unfortunately it doesn't really fix a ton because of how uh this setup specifically is with the green screen but usually clear background and foreground do uh, adjust and fix a bunch of things so that's important to know if you have any rough edges you want to fix that's usually how you do it is you increase the foreground and the background so the next thing we're going to be doing is using a polygon thing after so importing background right here it pretty simple so I can get like a ba background for the thing I go to the delta gear make sure it's in the frame and then I want to draw a polygon around the subject so this is gonna uh, so right now green screen it's like gonna replace the background in order to get rid of the stuff around it that isn't covered in green screen what you need to do is create a polygon around the subject that you have currently as I'm doing right now in this case I'm trying to create a very small polygon around the subject so like it encompasses him with not too much else so I'm just going to click in each of the sections and then be very careful not to get as much uh, other stuff as I can just clicking around and then eventually circling back to complete polygon I'm then going to right click on that node uh, which is the little thing here onto the delta key on it's like garbage mat which will allow me to sort of mask or hide this thing right here and then what I want to do is while well, clicking on the polygon node I want to go to inspector in here invert and what that's going to do is only select that subject and then anything that's not that subject is going to flip it around to like everywhere else and since i connected my background what's going to happen is my subject is going to be fully immersed in this background it's not going to have like what you saw before the green screen only that being the background it's going to be the entire thing because i had the mat uh, mask and then inverted it unfortunately what this method does not allow you to do is uh, what's called rotoscoping which is the ability for you to get rid of a background from a moving target create a very seamless look for your green screen so right now what i'm doing is very much what a rotoscope would do but without taking the time to rotoscope something so pretty much i'm moving the polygon that i made because the polygon is acting as the mask or acting as the like filter for what the green screen is showing um so i'm just moving it ever so slowly and what davinci resolve lets you do in this is automatically create keyframes which are just certain type of movements that you can do so right now i'm just adjusting the mask every time the subject moves to like accommodate the space around him and that's how you can like avoid rotoscoping. It's not the best, it does take a long time to do, but this is one method if you can't 
or that don't know how to rotoscope that this works as well. You can just move the mask every time the subject moves. Try to uh, get the subject in frame. What this doesn't allow you to do, unfortunately, though a lot of manual green screening as I'm doing here, is subjects that aren't available in the green screen, like this person here. He came into the scene and it isn't available, like there's not the green screen there, so he comes in from out of frame into the green screen. The only option showing here is the green screen part, so I have to move all the keyframes away, which isn't ideal, you know? It's not the best when it comes to quick access to the green screen, so that, uh, that but this is pretty much how this works, you know, polygon, connecting all these things, moving as much as possible, and sort of making it, it looks pretty good right now, it's just, you know, there's some things I don't, quite line up. So that's this method right here uh, with the Dimension Resolve free software, labeling in the description. And uh, next thing we're going to be going over to Final Cut Pro, showing you the quickest and easiest way to get rid of the green screen and the background. Okay, now we're onto one of the quicker and easier ways to get a functioning and working. Uh, this time we're going to be using Final Cut Pro, as you can see, and we're going to take you through the quick process of setting up the process. So we're going to go into downloads and we're going to uh, check in to uh, one of the various green screens we have, same thing we used before. We're gonna go in, find a background, simply put the background underneath the clip of uh, the video that we have here. We're going to extend it so it goes through everything. And right now it's not really doing anything because the green screen is not fixed. So we're gonna click on the clip and then go over to effects on the panel on the right and then keying. And we're gonna click on the keyer, drag it and drop it into the video thing right here. Scroll over to see that it automatically applied the keying effect to the green screen, identify that it was a green screen and then the background sensor was underneath the clip, got added and now it's a green screen pretty good, except you can see here there's a couple of little issues with the green screen type of shadows and stuff. So we're gonna click on the clip, go into inspector, and you'll see how the key is selected with all the effects and stuff. Underneath uh, the matte tools, which is what we're gonna be using to adjust the shadows, we click there under levels. We wanna bring the black levels up to get rid of the shadows of the top half, and then we're going to bring the gray levels up as well to bring out the shadows, or bring down the shadows in the bottom right there, like so, and then we're gonna go see the edging around this person's head, and we're gonna check. See, it's a little bit blurry, and we wanna kinda fix that, so we're gonna go to the spill suppression, and so going over to the uh, spill suppression tools, these are usually used to get rid of edges and find things around green screens and other uh, materials like blue screens. Simply, we're going to look at the edging here, figure out where it's most egregious and like bad, and then we're going to level it out. So usually in this case, I go and level uh, down the white level, because as you can see, the little edge here is white. So we usually level down the white area and it makes it very sort of like in the scene versus most green screens look like, oh, you're just on a green screen. We try to make this look very much that you're in an actual like background. So we end up uh, lowering the white levels as well and using some of the light wrap for a little bit of an amount of that. That usually brightens the areas that are not in the green screen a little bit to make them stand out more, to make sure they don't accidentally get uh, lost in the green screen. Demonstrating that right there. And unfortunately, what this method does not allow you to do is get rid of the background around the green screen. So like the other one you saw where you could um, draw a polygon around the uh, object and then invert it and be able to have the green screen around it. You cannot do it uh, in Final Cut the way you can in DaVinci. Their way to do it is unfortunately through rotoscoping, which I mentioned before. It's a way to get rid of the background of a moving character. And in this case, well, we, we actually had to do rotoscoping for the project we were working on this um, clip for, and we had to get rid of the background from the moving character. We Fortunately, the way you can actually uh, kind of sidestep this, which is our third method, of how to get a green screen once you have that thing ready in Final Cut Pro. You simply go into a motion graphics software, whatever thing you can uh, have. And what you want to do is draw green squares around everything that's not the green screen. So I have the clip right here. I'm in motion, which is um, Apple's thing someone to Final Cut. And pretty much I have the green screen. And then I drew with the Bizzer like kind of rectangle tool. I simply drew around what wasn't the green screen. So this window here, these bookshelves here, the top here. And I simply drew it around and then went to the fill color thing on the side, hit the eyedropper, and then made it green. Uh, allowed it to be the same green as the green screen, and so that when I put all three of them together in this little thing, and then I saved it as a generator later on, I was able to key this. So generators pretty much makes it like a video file type of thing that you can use in Final Cut. And so I put that back into Final Cut and was able to um, key the entire thing out green, obviously, and I was able to make this background black. 
and then put whatever thing I wanted in it. So as you can see, this is my process for making the uh, squares and how that kind of works. And then we went to Final Cut again and we imported it into the scene and keyed it off. And what happened was it became completely black, which was great. And then there was, of course, a little shadow. So I went over, adjusted the matte tools, as you can see, moved the black ahead to get rid of the shadows there, moved the gray ahead to get rid of the sort of gaps that that left, increased the spill contrast, the blacks moved up, the whites moved down to kind of make it so that it doesn't feel as place. And then I lowered the white level to make the screens not look as um, stand out, right? Because that's the thing you want to make sure every screen that you have doesn't seem out of place. Um, that's where we really tried to do uh, a good job of getting that ready. Uh, now, one thing, of course, this doesn't allow you to do that rotoscoping does is any person that's not currently in the frame from the um, available seating, uh, similar to the other option, does not magically become in the frame. You have to actually like rotoscope them out because anything that's not in the green screen frame obviously doesn't show regardless. This is effectively just a, a pseudo way to make everything the same like orientation, same color basically. So what we end up having to do is hours of editing just to get it right. So this is the best option for result, as you can see by this like end result page kind of thing. We made the entire thing a not single background. We had a, a 3D model of a room or whatever that we had. So it worked pretty well, but this is like kind of the basic setup is you have the entire thing like this. Try to make sure everything is good, everything fits, and your characters are still gonna magically disappear halfway through the scene, unfortunately. A basic way to do this, this works really well. Um, Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Those are the three methods you can use. The polygon one I showed in DaVinci Resolve, or you can do a quick one one in Final Cut right here uh, with just using a keying. Keying is usually what you do to get rid of green screens, which is good. And yeah, ultimately I think the, the, the result works. It's just not like the best in many cases, but for a quick green screen job that like is much better than what you typically find, I think this works pretty well. So uh, yeah, if you enjoy this and want to see more, make sure to, uh, you know, watch the video and stuff.